Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to add and subtract negative fractions. Now this is going to combine knowledge of adding and subtracting positive fractions and adding and subtracting positive and negative integers. So something to keep in mind as we go through our examples. And we're going to start with two addition problems and then move to two subtraction problems. Let's jump into number one where we have negative three fifths plus one third. Now the first thing that we need to do when adding fractions, we need to find a common denominator. So that bottom number, we have a five and a three. So we need to find the least common multiple between those two denominators, and that's going to be our least common denominator. Now you may be able to figure out what that least common multiple between our denominators is without writing out the multiples. I'm going to write out the multiples for a quick refresher in case you need it. So five and three, the multiples of five, I'm going to do the first five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then the first five multiples of three, and we're looking for a match here, 9, 12, 15. So we want the least common multiple, so the smallest in value that they have in common. Well, that's going to be 15. So that's our common denominator. So we are going to use 15 for our least common denominator, and now we need to rename our fractions with that denominator. So equivalent fractions with that denominator of 15. So let's start with negative 3 fifths. So how do we get 5, our denominator there, to equal 15? Well, multiply it by 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Now whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So negative 9 fifteenths is our renamed equivalent fraction with that denominator of 15. Let's do one third. We know 3 times 5 is 15. So whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 1 times 5 is 5. So 5 fifteenths is our renamed equivalent fraction for 1 third. Now we have a common denominator, so we are able to add. Now just like when we add positive fractions, we are going to add our numerators. So negative 9 plus a positive 5. That gives us negative 4. So that's our numerator. And then keep our denominator of 15 the same. Always check to see if you can simplify your answer. The only common factor between our numerator and denominator is one, so we are in simplest form, and we are done. So negative 4 fifteenths. Let's move on to number two, where we have negative 6 tenths plus negative 2 eighths. So the first thing that we need to do, find a common denominator. And we're going to find the least common denominator by finding the least common multiple between 10 and eight. And we're going to start with 10. So let's write out the first five multiples of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then let's write out four or five multiples of eight and see if we have any common multiples, so 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So 40 is a common multiple, and that happens to be the least common multiple, so that's going to be our least common denominator. So let's rewrite these fractions using our least common denominator of 40. So again, we're going to find equivalent fractions here with that denominator of 40. So let's start with negative 6 tenths. We need to think, how do we get 10 to equal 40 and then apply that to our numerator so we get an equivalent fraction? Well, we know 10 times 4 is 40, so let's do that to the top. 
in order to keep this equivalent. So negative six times four is negative 24. Now let's do negative two eighths. How do we get eight to equal 40? Well, we multiply it by five. So let's do that to the top to keep this equivalent. Negative two times five is negative 10. Now we have our fractions renamed with that least common denominator of 40. So we are now able to add. Let's add our numerators. So negative 24 plus negative 10 equals negative 34. So that is our numerator. And then our denominator is 40. So we have negative 34 fortieths. Now we do have a common factor of two between our numerator and denominator, so we can simplify. Let's divide both of these by two to get our answer in simplest form. So negative 34 divided by two is negative 17, and then 40 divided by two is 20. So our simplified answer is negative 17 twentieths. Now one more thing I do want to mention is how to write out negative fractions. There are different ways. We can write the negative sign with the numerator in front of the fraction or with the denominator. So keep in mind there are different ways to write out negative fractions. Now I go into more detail in another video. I drop that link down in the description. So there's how you add negative fractions. Let's move on to subtraction. Here are our subtraction examples. Let's jump into number one where we have negative three fourths minus one sixth. Now, just like when we subtract positive fractions, we need a common denominator. So the least common denominator between four and six is going to be the least common multiple between four and six. Now we may be able to think what that least common multiple uh, will be without writing out our lists of multiples for four and six, but just as a refresher, I will write out the multiples. So let's start with four. And again, we're looking for the least common multiple. So the smallest um, multiple in value that they share here. So we can count up by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Now those multiples go on forever. So we can just write the first five and see if we have any in common. If not, we can always extend our lists. So six, 12, 18, 24, 30. So we are looking for the least common multiple. So the smallest multiple in value that they share. And that is going to be 12. So that's the least common multiple, and therefore it's going to be our least common denominator. So 12 here, and now we need to rename our fractions with that common denominator of 12. Now these are going to be equivalent fractions, so we are not changing the value of the problem at all. Let's start with negative 3 fourths. So how do we get four to equal 12? Well, four times three is 12. So whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So negative three times three is negative nine. Negative nine twelfths is equivalent to negative three fourths, but we renamed it with that common denominator of 12. Now we need to do one sixth. So how do we get six to equal 12? Well, multiply it by two. Whatever we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top to keep it equivalent. One times two is two. So now we have our common denominator of 12 and we have our fractions renamed with that common denominator of 12. So we are able to subtract. Now, just like when we subtract positive and negative integers, we can add the opposite. So let's add the opposite. Well, the opposite of positive 2 twelfths is negative 2 twelfths. Now we can add our numerators. 
negative 9 plus negative 2 is negative 11, and we keep our denominator of 12. Always check to see if you can simplify your answer. Well, the only common factor between our numerator and denominator is 1, so we are in simplest form, and our final answer is negative 11 twelfths. Let's move on to number 2, where we have negative 5 fifteenths minus negative 9 tenths. Now again, the first thing that we need to do, we need to find a common denominator. And the least common denominator is going to be our least common multiple. So let's find the least common multiple between 15 and 10. We'll start by writing out the multiples of 15. So 15, 30. Now you may notice that 30 is going to be a multiple of 10 as well. So there would be no um, reason to continue our lists if you either know the least common multiple off the bat and you can think of it, or if you find it while you're writing out your lists. Again, there would be no reason to continue on if you recognize that. I'm going to continue going and write out four multiples of each and then kind of go from there. So this would be 45 and then 60. So let's write out our multiples of 10 here. So 10, 20, 30, like we talked about, 40. So 30 is going to be our least common multiple. So I wrote out four multiples each for 15 and 10, and then looked for the least common multiple. Again, like we talked about with number one, if you do not see a least common multiple as you write out your lists, you can always extend your list. My suggestion, write four or five multiples and then go from there. So our least common multiple and therefore our least common denominator is going to be 30. Now let's rename. How do we get 15 to equal 30? Well, multiply it by two. Do the same thing to the top. Negative five times two is negative 10. How do we get 10 to equal 30? Let's do negative nine tenths. Well, multiply it by three. Do the same thing to the top to keep it equivalent. Negative nine times three, negative 27. Now that we have our common denominator of 30 and our fractions renamed, we have equivalent fractions there. Remember, we're not changing the value of anything. These are equivalent. We are ready to subtract. Again, just like when we subtract positive and negative integers, we can add the opposite. So the opposite of a negative 27 thirtieths would be a positive 27 thirtieths. So let's add a negative 10 plus a positive 27 equals a positive 17. And we keep our denominator of 30 the same. Now the only common factor between 17 and 30 is one. So this is in simplest form and we are done, 17 thirtieths. Now there is one more thing I do wanna mention and it's about subtracting a negative. So for example, number two, we started with negative 5 fifteenths and we subtracted negative 9 tenths. We ended up, for our answer, with 17 thirtieths. So we increased in value, even though this was a subtraction problem. Now that's because when you subtract a negative, you actually increase in value. You can think of it as subtracting or taking away debt, which is a good positive thing. So again, when you subtract a negative, you are going to increase in value. That's something to think about and keep in mind when working with negatives. So there you have it. There's how you add and subtract negative fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.